What's going on, everybody? Mike Taylor, student. You're a phony. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. That's right. You're a big fat phony. Hey, you know who lives in this house? A great big phony. Physical therapist here today with another video. We're out of the garage today. It's that time of year in Texas where it becomes impressively hot. So we're inside my dining room. Hopefully the cat and the dog kind of let us make this video in peace and quiet. Shout out to Sassy and Austin. So today I'm gonna to be telling you how you can get over any powerlifting injury and get back to crushing PRs and lifting weights. If you've spent any considerable amount of time lifting or competing in powerlifting, you've probably ended up banged up or injured at one point or another. Elbows, backs, knees, shoulders, and hips are all common areas for nagging aches and pains that can keep us out of the gym and derail our progress. Now obviously, this sucks because you aren't making progress, but for a lot of us, powerlifting is a lot more than just lifting weights. When you're injured, not only do you lose powerlifting, but you lose that hobby, that social interaction, that escape from daily life, all of that that means so much to so many of us. So today we're gonna to be addressing just that. I'm gonna be showing you how you can get over any powerlifting injury so that you can get back in the gym again. So it's important to note that when I say any powerlifting injury, I'm really referring to any powerlifting injury that doesn't require surgery or some sort of advanced medical attention. If your injury, pain, or lack of function is severe, I highly recommend that you go get it checked out by a medical professional versus trying to handle it yourself. If on the other hand, your pain is more of a nagging, persisting pain that just limits your ability to train the way you want to, I think this video could be helpful for you. So first of all, why do injuries happen in the first place? What kind of sick joke is this? So injuries occur due to three primary reasons. You either have abnormal stress placed onto normal tissue, normal stress placed onto abnormal tissue, or some combination of both of those. So essentially what this means is that you can have freak accidents where the load is simply too great for our otherwise healthy tissues to manage, or you can have repetitive stress wear down healthy tissue until it hits its breaking point. So for most powerlifters, I'd argue that most injuries occur due to the latter reason, as elevated fatigue secondary to increased volume takes its toll on our bodies over time. So obviously volume and fatigue are important because it's what makes us stronger in the long run. But as you know, we don't get stronger in the gym while we're lifting, we get stronger while we're resting. And the same can be said for tissue healing. When our net fatigue outpaces our ability to recover, our risk for injury increases. The first principle of rehab is understanding tissue healing timelines. Different tissues such as bone, muscle, tendons, and ligaments will all recover at slightly different rates due to a large number of factors, but mostly due to that specific tissue's amount of vascularization. And what I mean by this is that in most cases, the more blood flow a certain area receives, the faster it's going to heal. So muscle will heal faster than tendon, will heal faster than ligaments in most cases. There are all kinds of charts that list specific tissue healing timelines, but without having a specific diagnosis for you, it's really only a guesstimate anyway. The important thing to take away from this video is that different tissues will heal at different rates. And beyond that, there's nothing that we can really do to make a tissue heal faster. There's no magic pill or fancy modality or expensive foam roller that we can use to speed up our body's natural healing process. What we can do with tissue healing timelines, however, is we can optimize our recovery by giving ourselves realistic expectations. So within each tissue healing timeline, going on behind the scenes, there's an entire cascade of events going on at the cellular level. So I'll spare you all the nitty gritty details for this video, but the second principle to take away is that tissue healing occurs in phases and that each phase has different goals. To help illustrate this next principle, I put together a very poorly written and very poorly drawn illustration on a whiteboard that we can use to follow along, but I think it will be helpful overall. So, here we go. So on this axis here, we have time ranging from zero days all the way up to six months. This is not done to scale. And on this axis here, we have tissue strength ranging from strong to not so strong. And so what I'm gonna go through is I'm gonna go through the different phases of tissue healing and our basic goal for each of these phases. So let's see here, we're starting at day zero. You have both of these tissues, which as you can see here, red, we're referring to a grade two sprain or a tear of a ligament. And then the blue line represents a grade two strain or tear of a muscle. And so this is gonna be an important illustration of how different tissues have different tissue healing timelines. So as you can see, back to day zero, we go here and then we have injury right here. And at this point, we go all the way down. That tissue is not as strong anymore. Now we are in the acute phase. And as you can see, the acute phase lasts anywhere from three days up to a week. And 
it's gonna be characterized by inflammation. You're gonna have an increase in pain and a decrease in function overall. And really at this point, our goal should be to protect this injured area as best we can, because right now we are the most vulnerable to re-injury. At this stage here, you're not going to gain anything by trying to rush back to what you were doing before. Instead, the best thing you can do is protect it. This doesn't mean that you should be lazy and not active, but what it means is that you should instead focus on activities that don't put the injured area under a lot of stress. So moving on, once we pass that acute inflammatory phase, we've now reached a phase of time that's referred to as the subacute phase or the proliferative phase, depending on which timeline you're following. And what characterizes this phase is the laying down of new tissue to replace the old broken tissue. And so as you can see, you're gonna have a decrease in pain, your function is gonna increase, but you're not exactly out of the woods yet at this point because while there is new tissue and it's healthy, it is not yet strong. As you can see here, our strong meter is only so-so. So what we do for here is we begin gradually reintroducing activities. So for a power lifter, this could mean performing your compound movements with less weight or with less range of motion or utilizing substitutions instead that are pain-free. If it's still painful to perform a low bar back squat with a barbell, why don't you try using a goblet squat with a dumbbell or kettlebell? If it's less painful, that's what you should use at this time to help still load the tissues, but in a non-painful way. The reason this is important is because you're not yet ready to go back to where you were before, but it's important to load these tissues because loading tissues is how they adapt. So we have to find a way to load the tissue somehow in a way that's tolerable. This one week point in the timeline is a good area to point out that as you can see, depending on the type of tissue being affected, either ligament or muscle here, it's gonna go at a slightly different rate. You'll know that the muscle is healing at a much faster rate, and that's because the muscle is gonna receive a lot more blood flow, especially once we start exercising more. This is just another thing to keep in mind that depending on your injury, it may or may not take more or less time. It all depends. And finally, we reach the phase of time that could be referred to as chronic, and that is the maturation phase. And so this stage is gonna be characterized by the maturation of the tissue that was laid down in the subacute phase. So all of those fibers that were laid down, they're now being made stronger and stronger and stronger until it's just like the fibers that it's replacing. Overall, this isn't all that different from the previous phase. The main goal for the maturation phase is continuing to progressively overload the tissues. So in summary, we have the acute phase, in which our goal is to protect, the subacute phase, in which the new fibers are starting to grow and be laid down, and our goal here is to help support them by providing some gentle stress as tolerated, and then finally, the maturation phase, in which our goal is to really stress these tissues with gradual progressive overload so that they can grow stronger and more resilient and more able to do the things that we want them to do, like squat 500 pounds. So a big mistake that I see a lot of powerlifters and strength athletes make is that they jump right back to where they were before the first day that they feel pain-free. I'm here to tell you that on the first day that you don't experience pain, your tissues are still adapting and are not ready for that kind of stress. And remember, the risk for re-injury will always be higher following an injury, especially if loading is not programmed in intelligently and with progression in mind. Look, now is not the time to be a hero. You need to trust the process and continue gradually exposing yourselves to greater and greater stress over time. This is exactly what got you strong in the first place. Your body adapts to stress. Just because it's an injury does not make it any different. The same principles apply. It may be frustrating to not be able to crush weights the way you want to, but when dealing with an injury, the best thing you can do is seize the opportunity and learn from it. So I know that sounds corny, but I really do think it's the truth. So remember, injuries happen for one of three reasons. Take this opportunity to review your training. Were you pushing too hard too quickly? Were you skimping on some important accessory work? Did you have a little ache that you trained through and ignored until you could no longer handle it? You need to admit these things to yourself and learn from them so you don't make the same mistake twice. So for example, if you hurt your low back while you were squatting because you were pushing too hard too fast, you were skipping all of your core work, and you knew that you had a technique fault that you need to clean up, take the time that you're out from doing heavy squats to focus your time and energy on these things. You can do that extra assistance work, revamp your program programming and work on your technique while the weight is light. Just don't let yourself get hurt again for the same reason. So you might be saying to yourself, Dang Mike, you said you're gonna help me recover from any powerlifting injury and all you did was talk about some sciencey nerd crap. 
What the heck? But believe it or not, that really is all there is to it. Anyone with a proper understanding of these principles can apply them to almost any sports soft tissue injury. So take your injury and assess your limitations. With respect to the rough guidelines that I gave you in this video, you can construct your own rehab plan with goals for each specific phase. Initially, the focus is gonna be on letting that injured area rest and recover with more emphasis placed on gentle motion. As that timeline progresses, you can begin loading that tissue with pain-free substitutions to some exercises that you were doing before. You keep plugging away at that, and before you know it, you'll be adding in the main big three lifts again. At that point, you just progress just like you did before until you are back to where you are or well beyond it. So I understand that this probably seems easier said than done, and I'm totally understanding of that. Managing injuries is hard work, and this is something that I do every single day. So just remember that the specifics are less important than the principles outlined here. So you can apply the principles that we went over to any situation, and you just need to fill in the blanks as you see fit with specific exercises and variations that are tailored specifically to you. At the end of the day, it's my goal to help each and every one of you live a life on your own terms, and I do not plan on stopping that goal anytime soon. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If there's anything that you want to see covered in future content, please drop it in the comments below or shoot me a DM. And as always, happy training.